Okay, this is 9.7 graphing a piecewise function, problem type 1. And so here we do have a bunch of constants. So when I separate this, it's going to be y equals negative 1, y equals 0, y equals 1, and y equals 2. This is, of course, being the y value. Now if I make a table... I want to always have at least three points in my table. Now, sometimes we two of those are going to come from our statements here. Um, and sometimes we're not going to be able to have three points. It all just depends, okay? So what I'm going to use for negative 1 is I have to use these two values. So negative 2 and negative 1. I also have to use something in between, like negative 1.5. And then for the second section, for where I have zero, I have to use negative one and zero and something in between like negative 0 0.5. Same for the one, I'm going to use zero and one and something in the middle like positive 0.5. And the same here, I'm gonna use the x values one and two and something in the middle like 1.5. And then what I would do is I would plug these values into the equation that I'm given. But since there's nowhere to plug x into, and it's telling me y equals negative one, this means that the y value is negative one, no matter what that x value is. So here, all three of these x values will have the same y value of negative one. Similarly, for this case, again, there's nowhere to plug in the x, the y value is zero, no matter what the x value is. Similarly here, the y value is one, no matter what x is, and here the y value is 2 no matter what x is. And so then to draw this on the graph, to draw this on the graph, it's a little bit complicated inside Alex. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to decide whether or not these ends are going to have open dots or solid dots. Now the fastest way I can explain that is that if you do not have an equal bar, then you're going to have an open dot. If you do have an equal bar, you will have a closed dot. And if you happen to be a number that's in the middle, then you have just what's called a regular dot, okay? I think Alex notates them with a little x, okay? So if I'm gonna use this top function, I notice that negative two should have an open dot because there's no bar, and negative one should have a solid dot. And then this one's just gonna have a regular dot, which Alex marks with an X, a little tiny X. So for here, negative one is gonna be an open dot, um, zero is going to be a closed dot, and then of course the guy in the middle is gonna be a regular dot. And here I get um, 0 is going to be an open dot here, and 1 is going to be a closed dot. The guy in the middle is going to be a regular dot. And then for the bottom section, 1 is going to have an open dot, and 2 is going to have a solid dot. And so the first thing I'm going to do, and the one in the middle, sorry, is going to have a little regular dot. So the way I do it in Alex is the first thing I'm going to do is plot all of my points using the appropriate buttons. So if I want to plot the open dots, I'm going to use the open dot button in Alex. If I want to plot the regular points, I need to use the pencil that's inside Alex. Okay, And if I want to um, plot the solid dots, then I need to use the solid dot button inside Alex. On paper, I can just draw those things, little circles, little X's, little solid dots, right? But in the computer, you have to make sure you're using the correct button to make the correct kind of point. So I always suggest to do it on paper first so that you know what it's supposed to look like because it's much easier to graph on paper. And then go look and see what you've done inside Alex and make sure that they are the same. So for in this case, I'm going to go negative 2 and negative 1 and plot an open dot. 
negative 1.5 and negative 1 and do a little x negative 1 and negative 1 and do a solid dot then I'm gonna go over the next section and I'm gonna say negative 1 and 0 gets an open dot negative 0.5 and 0 gets a little x 0 and 0 gets a solid dot then 0 and 1 0 and 1 gets an open dot 0.5 and 1 gets an X and 1 and 1 gets a solid dot and then 1 and 2 gets an open dot 1.5 and 2 gets a little X and then 2 and 2 gets a solid dot and then because it should be lines, right constant value equations or functions are just horizontal lines so I do want to draw a horizontal line for each one of these sections but how do I do that in Alex what you're going to do is you're then going to select the icon that looks like this this is called the segment where it's like a line but it has two endpoints concrete endpoints that stop it so it's not continuing forever in any direction okay so you need to click on the segment button and when you have that segment button you're going to click on the left button here the left point here click on the right point here and it'll draw that segment for you then you click it again you click on this left button or this left point that right point it'll draw the segment in for you click the segment button again click on the left point click on the right point it'll draw it for you click the segment button again click the left point click the right point and it will draw the segment for you. Once you have all your segments drawn on your graph, then you can click submit to submit your answer. Okay, so I wanted to go over another kind of problem that might be in this section. It does still have the constants, but notice that the values here are different. I'm not starting and stopping at a certain x value. I am starting at one and then going forever in a certain direction. Here I only have one x value. And then here I'm starting at one and then going in another direction forever. So this one is worth talking about as well in this same um, problem type one. So I do have y equals negative one, I do have y equals zero, and I do have y equals negative two. Now if I make a chart, I mentioned before that you wanna have three points just so that you can really have an idea of what to graph. Unfortunately though, not all of these pieces will allow me to have three points. So for the first one, I do have to use this endpoint, which is one. And because there's no equal bar, it will be an open dot at one. And then I have to pick x values that are less than one. So like zero and negative one. And there I have my three points. Now remember, these two will be regular points, okay? Only the end point gets the open or solid, all other points will be regular points, which are indicated by the little x using the pencil. Okay. For the middle one though, um, you only have x equal to one. There's no range of x values. I can't go from here to there. It is literally just one x value and one x value only, and that one x value happens to be the number one, okay? So you can't have three points in this particular section. It's just not possible by the definition. Then here for this one, I have x greater than one, so I do have to use the one for the endpoint, but it's a um, open dot because there's no equal bar. And then I have to pick x values that are greater than one, so like two and three. And then what we do is we try to plug these x values into our equation, but there's no x to plug the, the x values into. So it's just negative one is the y value for all three of those. Here, again, I can't plug in one, so zero is just the y value. I can't plug in any of these, so negative two is just the y value for all three of them. Don't forget, here, it's gonna be regular points because the end point was already spoken for. Here, I didn't mention it, but it does say equal, and that's what the little equal bar underneath the inequality stands for as well. So the fact that I have equals means that this one should be a solid dot, okay? Now, if I try to plot these, I have to do it very similar way as I did the first example. 
So the first thing you want to do is plot all of the points um, using the open dot to plot the open dots, using the pencil to plot the regular points, and then using the solid dot to plot the solid points. So here I'm going to have Here I'm going to have 1 and negative 1 with an open dot, 0 and negative 1 with the regular points, and negative 1 and negative 1 with the regular points. And remember, this is going forever to the left. So it's x is less than 1 always. So after this point, I have to draw an arrow, okay? And so what that means is that eventually I want this to look like a line with an arrow. And I'll show you how to do that in Alex in just a bit. So for this one, I'm going to go to 1 and 0, and I'm going to plot a solid point. For here, I'm going to plot 1 and negative 2 and do an open dot. 2 and negative 2, a regular dot. 3 and negative 2, a regular dot. And this one also says x is greater than 1 forever. So there would be an arrow going in that direction. So essentially, I would want to draw a line there with an arrow going in this direction. Okay, But how do I do that inside Alex? There is a button inside Alex that looks like what we call a ray. So it's a line, but it only has one end point and no end point on the other side. Okay, And since I want this piece to go in that direction, right? because I plotted that point first, then this one, then this one, and I could have kept picking x values that were less than 1. I would have just kept getting more and more and more points forever. So what you'll do is you'll click on this button, and then you'll mark the leftmost point, or I'm sorry, the rightmost point, which is here, and then mark the leftmost point there. Once you do that, it will draw the graph in that direction. If you do it backwards, if you click this point first and then that point, you're going to notice it's going to draw the arrow in the other direction. So it's very important that the first point you plot is where the end should be. Okay? And the end is always going to be at these solid or open dots. Okay? So for this one here, I want to pick on that ray button again. But I want it to go in that direction. So I'm going to select this point first and then this point second, and it will draw the ray going in that direction. And then it always asks you, is this continuous or not? This is not continuous, right? I don't think problem type 1 does ask you if it's continuous. But if it does, it's not. Because you have a break here and a break there in the graph. Same thing with the first example. We had a bunch of breaks in the graph. So neither one of these functions are continuous. But I'm, I don't think that they ask you on problem type 1, but I do know they do ask you that question in problem types 2 and 3. So just keep that in mind.